Hi folks and welcome to this new video. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can write unit tests when you're using Entity Framework or Entity Framework Core. This is a very important part because imagine you write an application like you see in a minute uh, in our case here, where you store data in a database and you can't access the database in your unit test because otherwise uh, you would modify data and eventually compromise all the data in it. So there are multiple scenarios. Uh, one way is, is kind of using an integration test where you set up a real database and use uh, this kind of, of a scenario. But there is a very simple, very effective way to write actual unit tests um, for your application. And it's called an in-memory database. So imagine the database is not physically available. It's just loaded into the RAM, into your application, and you can access the database like you would, like a SQL Server, Postgres, uh, SQLite in real life, but it's only there as long as your tests are running. If your tests are finished, the database is removed immediately. SQLSharer is an online learning platform. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a month free trial of Skillshare. I personally love the fact that with one subscription, you get so many different high quality videos from all different fields out there. You can learn about coding, filmmaking, marketing, animation, UI, UX design, and so on. So there is limitless possibilities. One of my favorite things in software development, as you guys probably know, is clean code and guess what? On Skillshare is a lovely course from Christian Hamann, senior developer at Microsoft from Berlin, about the JavaScript toolkit, write cleaner, faster, and better code. I highly respect Christian and can recommend his class without any doubt. You will just learn how to write elegant, clean, and better code in the future. If you're completely new in the world of software development and clean code is just a phrase which confuses you, don't worry more. There are plenty of beginner courses on Skillshare as well. So it doesn't matter if you are a beginner, intermediate or expert developer or in your specific field, you can always and will always learn more on Skillshare. I guarantee you that. What have you done? Skillshare and I partnered up so that the first 1000 users who uses my link in the description to sign up, get a free membership trial of Skillshare Premium. And now let's get back into the regular video where you can retrieve some kind of users. Let's just test it out. So it's working. Um, scroll in. So uh, we do get a user endpoint. Actually, right now there are three users in the database and friends and Lenny. And you can create new users, update users and delete users. So just have a look at our code right now. We're using some kind of user DB context, which is a DB set. Uh, our user have an ID, first name, last name, and an email property. So right now, when our application is started, we are adding the DB context and we tell the application to use SQL or SQLite. And we got a path um, to our a database which is right now in the local application folder. Sure, this uh, database is locally, so uh, you won't use that approach for a production environment. But imagine there is a, a Microsoft SQL Server or Azure SQL, and you don't want uh, your tests to be actually manipulating data in the database. So you can't use that approach there. What you have to do if we jump over to our test itself. So let's imagine we want to test our user service, which accesses the user DB context. So here you can see uh, the user is added, uh, it is a lead operation, get user by ID, uh, get all users and uh, the update user. We just want to test if we uh, create a user, actually in our context there is a user. Whatever the database does, it doesn't matter to us because we are using an ORM, uh, which is an object relational mapper, which does all the dirty work in the database itself. So if you jump over to a unit test, let's first make sure uh, that you have the, the correct packages. 
the NuGet package is installed. So uh, to get this working, you have to use uh, Entity Framework core in memory. Just make sure uh, if you're using uh, the core version, .NET Core, in my case it's .NET 6 already, or using an older or classic version uh, to, to use the corresponding uh, package right there. The rest is pretty, pretty standard, fluent assertions and all the other test dependencies. Right, so now in our unit test, it's pretty, pretty easy to set up an in-memory database. All you have to do is those lines here, right? So you have to uh, create a DB context options, options builder type user DB context. And right in there, you can define what type of database you want to use, right? So you can use here some kind of memory because it's already installed. Uh, those options, as you can see right down, SQLite, SQL Server. Uh, can be used. Uh, you can you can extend those by installing uh, far more packages. So in our case, we are using an in-memory database. An in-memory database has at least one uh, parameter. In my case, it's test database. It doesn't really matter, right? So just give their name, and then uh, that's it. You return a new user DB context with the builder options. So if you jump back to our user DB context, just make sure that you provide the option um, to pass in the DB context options uh, argument, right? So you have to, to pass them in the base class, which is the DB context, and that's it. Right now, you can completely configure those parts in the options. And then all we have to do is initiate our user service, like you would in any test anyways, and pass in the user DB context uh, from the memory part, right? So if you jump back to, to our test, what are we doing here? We are uh, generating a user object uh, right in this line here, where we just uh, yeah create a random uh, new GUID, a glory unique identifier, and then first name, last name, and an email address, right? In our particular test, we are creating the user we are pushing this user in our database, right? So why the user service to create user async is adding the, the user object to the DB context and all changes are saved asynchronously. Uh, after that, we are retrieving all users, right? Uh, we can, and that's one extension. What I will test is just to retrieve the specific user, right? So um, let's just call the create user and hop over to the user service. Let's call get user by ID async and just use the user.id. All right, so right now that should be our user. Let's just uh, run the test via debug and let's just see what will be returned. Actually, I've written the, the logic for the service just before this, this video, so let's hope it works. All right. Of course, uh, that is an asynchronous uh, method. We have to use the input keyword, otherwise it won't really work in our use case here because uh, the only thing we're getting back is the task itself. All right, now let's see the created user. Oh, that's looking pretty good. We get our properties like we have uh, defined right there. And we also getting the ID, perfect. So just to be uh, completely sure that all of this works as it should be, we're just uh, copying those um, fluent assertion statements. And let's just rerun the test. So test is passing, let's get over to our test explorer. Just to make sure, um, just rerun this. Um, all right, so it's great, perfectly. So what we're seeing right there is that we are adding um, parts to, to the context and we are getting all users, yeah, which are all users that are available in, in our uh, in-memory database. And since or hence we are just uh, created the, the, the context right there, we didn't add any new users 
I'm just prior to this, so the first add uh, happened here. We then retrieved all users, all. So there is only one. So we can just say a single if there is any additional users. Um, as you guys know, with single you get an exception, right? Because a uh, single just returns, yeah, one instance. If there are more than one, it will throw an error. It is green as well. And then we are using the uh, get user by ID async. And we're just seeing that we're getting a uh, user returned and the user matches our created users because that's what we did. Um, just a little callback uh, that, you can, that you don't think that I'm using the, the SQLite database. If I'm getting over here in a web application, which I just started, and heading over to the user endpoint and just execute this part, we are getting free users, as you guys see. So that has nothing to do with, with our SQLite database. They are uh, decoupled, they are not used, they are separated, right? So the real application um, is defined in our startup logic, as I've shown in the beginning where I just add the DB context and I told uh, Entity Framework Core just to use the SQL database and the place where uh, it should be stored. And in our unit test, I just defined uh, my context right here using an in-memory database with my user DB context and I just uh, passed it in the user service. All right, yeah, guys. So that was uh, a very quick, very short tutorial how you use an in-memory database uh, for testing database context in, in the context of uh, Entity Framework and Entity Framework Core in uh, Jotnet. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know in the comments below as always. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.